quite strange to be in a high school and the bell rings and there isn't an explosion into the hallways. Jan says there are not enough students at North to justify paying for electives and after-school activities that match offerings at high schools with hundreds of more students. Critics of the closure say the district set North up to fail. I went to Lincoln Elementary School, closed. Relatives of mine went to Willard, closed. Some people went to Franklin, it's closed. To me, black excellence, first and foremost, is who I try to be day in, day out. Excellence is a habit. It's a decision that you make. When we talk about excellence, man, I mean, it is the standard. To me, it's about working toward perfection, knowing that there's never, ever been anybody here that's really uh, been perfect. When you start impacting people's lives, when you start changing the course of history, that's powerful stuff. Personally, I feel like black excellence means to me, us as African-American people doing what we do best. I try my best as a young man to better my character. When I come to school, ready to do whatever is coming my way, and you know, I maintain what I gotta do. So excellence is this practice of doing things the right way, on purpose, intentionally, each and every time, because ultimately they will change the way and they'll change your course of life. North is like the center of North Minneapolis. The community was thriving then. Everybody was proud to be a Northsider. It was just a special place, the energy, the energy in the city, the mix of the fashion, the sports. We were just proud people here. The fashion was crazy. It wasn't, I didn't have enough money to keep up. But it <laughs> fashion was important because it was kind of like your social staple. And if you got the attention of your cohort, you knew you had made it. What they used to say to me all the time, you're geared. And I used to love that. Every day, you're geared. It was a stamp. It was a stamp of approval. You had guys that didn't care about trends at all and that were like the art guys that just marched to the beat of their own drum all the time. And then you had like champions back now. We were heavy on champion, like the Nauticas, Polo. You know, Tommy Hilfiger was big, just starting to come around then, and then the polos, or loafers with your pennies in them, and you know, that type of, of fashion. I remember in the yearbook, people would always argue about who was the best dressed. That was like one of the things. I keep saying it was a lot of fun, man. It was, you know, and everybody liked everybody. There was no drama or anything. Basketball was the national pastime in North Minneapolis. You know, the Friday night games, I must admit, when I was going to North, I didn't go to many games because I was in the basement cutting the hair of the guys who were headed to the games. Because that's how serious the game was. You went and got your hair cut before you went to the game, right? Like, because the game was a social event. We had, like, golfers would come, Timberwolf players would come. Prince came to a couple games. Like it was, it was big business, man. It was a big deal. Every every game was jam packed. Every game. I mean, if you didn't, weren't there early, you know, like here they say, if you're not there for the North and Henry game at by the you know 4:30, you won't get in. It was like that for every game. Lane. Then we had the Crosstown rival with, with St. Paul Central. That was sold out two, three days before the game even happened. We did some huge things, man. We were 81 and four, three championships, three rings. To Elamine, to win it. Yes! with the win! There were more than 1,100 students attending North High School just six years ago. This year, there are 265. Only about 40 of those are freshmen. That's a 75% drop in enrollment. The halls are really quiet. 
around 2009, 2010. It shut down a lot of our middle schools. North High going south, I think, directly relates to the real estate market and the closing of the feeder schools, but more so the upward mobility of the community. Not necessarily that you're abandoning your community, it's just this is my opportunity to do better. And so I'm out. So subsequently you take your kids with you. The natural migration of coming to North just kind of stopped. We were close to shut down. The one year when I was head coach, you know, on a good day there was 50 kids in a building. You know what I mean? In a building that holds 1,700. Sports is big here for us at North High. So I think that helped turn the corner a little bit once we started getting, you know, okay, we got some good kids in here that can play. Now we're winning. And once you start winning, you know, people want to be a part of a winner. You know, the, the community's embracing North again. And that's what I would just say, just give it a chance because it's not what, what people think it is. It's, it's far from what they think it is. And this building, a lot of good stuff is going on. building basically you know you had a building that was built for 1200 kids with 30 40 kids uh, walking around the guy that they had coaching at the time I don't think he wanted to come back you know and I ended up getting a job here as the head coach uh, I was here for a year but at that time I was going through some some personal things you know I wasn't really in a position to be a, a head coach for a bunch of young guys and then Larry called me one day he was like, oh, I just had an interview at Henry, and they're not going to hire me. So I was like, man, so what you think about, you know, getting the band back together? And I'm like, what do you mean put the band back together, you know? He's like, what you talking about? I was like, you know, you come over north, you know, take over the program, you know, and I'll coach the JV and coach Pete, you know, he can do the C-Squad, you know, because us three have been together 15, 16 years. A few weeks later, the, the principal and the AD reached out to me. Would you consider coming and coaching at North High? And in all of that, to be honest with you, I, I told Mike, I told Dr. Berry at the time, I said, you know, let me pray about this. You know, I just knew Larry would get us to that place where North needed. You know, at the time, like I said, you know, it was, it was in that gray area, he was struggling. You know what I mean? Like I said, 60 kids on a good day. And I knew what Larry could bring to the table. One morning I got up, I'll never forget the day, it was a Wednesday morning, and I was going through my devotion, and I came across a scripture in Matthew that said Jesus had to go off into a far off land in order to be respected. And I knew that that was the answer to my prayer. So I called Mike, I called Dr. Berry, I said I'm all in. And I always say the rest has been history. It was ecstatic. You know, we got a Hall of Fame coach coming to North High School to help our boys get to college. You know what I mean? And everybody wants that. His big thing was like, you know, you come play for me, I'm gonna get you to college. And I seen that, you know what I mean, firsthand. So I knew it was true. Every senior he had, he got him to college. Well, day one, when I walked in, first thing I did is I got every single kid that had previously played, write down your name, your student ID number, and I pulled all the grades. We had our informational meeting that fall. I said to the kids, we're going to make history. You get an opportunity at the time. We only had 64 kids in the building. You know, but I said, uh, we're going to win championships. They built a basketball legacy in the 1990s, but low enrollment and the near closure of their school in 2010 took its toll on the program. Yeah, this is a good comeback story, though. After nabbing a state championship title last month, many say that North High School is on the rise again. School officials say they are seeing an 81 and a half percent graduation rate, an increase of more than 39 percent over the last two years. All right, let's go. We'll rotate. Three minutes, Trent. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Let's be leaders in this building. Being different is what? The Being different is what? The so we want to be different. We want to be different. And believe me, I know that's hard at 16, 17, 18 years old. I, and this is this is just me. My goals. My goals mean more to me than anything out there. And the first thing that I had to do, Omar, you know what I'm telling people? Everybody asks me what's a, what's a major thing that I had to do to change my life. What I had to do was I had to change the people that I hung out with, my friends. 
Because misery loves company. Misery loves company. So I'm just saying, man, whatever that goal is, whatever that thing is, man, take care of that. Take care of that. That's got to be about more important than anything else out here, man. Because if you don't do that, you ain't going to be no good to yourself. If you ain't no good to yourself, you can't be no good to nobody else. Understand your why. Where you're trying to go to. It matters. Polar, family. You know, for me, it, it's always been about being a change. Being the change to me is about being someone who's not afraid to stand up, being that voice, being that advocate. Be the change is a paradigm shift. Be the change to me is about like people taking a look at themselves and saying, what am I doing? What I wanted to do with Be The Change is bring people together, to have a conversation and to be a part of a movement. So the whole premise about Be The Change is to inspire people to look within. And that's what I want my young men to be. When you read about North Minneapolis, highest teen pregnancy, achievement gap, highest unemployment, the lack of economic development, I want to help these young men become the change agents and be the people who go away to school, come back, and change this environment. But here's what happens. Some of you guys get stuck, man. And 10 years from now, five years from now, you're going to ask yourself, why? This is why I keep saying habits are hard to break. Because in less than 48 hours, some of y'all back to the same stuff. Some of y'all back to the same stuff. It makes an impact on people. If you sit, listen, and, and absorb what he, he's trying to teach you, you know, it'll change your life. I think when you're here, you don't think about him as much. You kind of just like brush it off, like, oh, it's just coach talking, it's just coach talking. But then for me, like I get out of um, high school and I'm in, on the college and I think about what he used to say, I'm like, yeah, he was right. All of the coaches I've had, he's probably number one. The bond we have together, like, it's just, it's an unbreakable bond. He showed me what it took to be successful in this world. He never gave me the easy way out. Like, he knew, I, he showed me I'd have to take everything that I wanted. Like, nothing was gonna be handed to me. I think I learned the most is how to um, deal with negative situations. Like, he showed me how to get past it, stay positive, and just fight for whatever I wanted. I looked at him as a motivational person, a person who pushed me and just wanted to see me get better. The way Coach McKenzie helped me was just, he pushed me, he's how he pushed the seniors, the juniors, anybody else when I was in eighth grade, because he believed that I could do it. But every time I see a young man walk across that stage, every time I see a guy like Odell come back in the gym, every time I see Taylor or Tyler, or I read about those kids or see what they're doing in the community or, or go and coach and see them on the sidelines, I mean, you know what, I just feel that uh, I'm doing what God put me here to do. How many of y'all been shot at? How many of y'all know somebody that's been shot or murdered? That's all of y'all. How many of y'all believe in this room right now that you're gonna make it? That's beautiful. You have to be able to understand that you can make it. Every last one of y'all in this room, y'all got value. Y'all got value not only in where y'all at right now, but outside in the real world. Y'all got people that look up to y'all. This most recent shooting has again shaken up the Near North neighborhood. One day after bullets hit Minneapolis High School, students and staff there are calling for change. This is not about North High. This is about the North Side. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. But what I do today is important. I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. One, two, three, let's work. One, two, three, let's work. Listen, here, here. Now, now they don't make that pass. This is an invitation that he's, this says he's open. This says he's not. Better, better, that's it, that, that, better, but, ah! Great job, you can do it! You can do it! I, I swear I won't tell you nothing. Trust, trust the process. Devon is an incredible talented kid. 
you know, once that light bulb really comes on and he wakes up and, and, and does what he really needs to do in terms of getting in the gym and working at his craft, he has a chance to be something really, really special. Give him some space. Retreat, retreat. Oh, he's using the screen. Good work, good work, good work. Oh, One, two, three. Oh, Four, five, six. Family. What's up, T? How was your day? Good, good. I watch highlights and I study the game every day. Right before I eat, I grab my phone and I'll just put on a recent game and watch the highlights. I noticed 2017 when I started seeing the dunking clips and stuff like that. That's when I knew that he was really going to be great at basketball. Me and Devon, we are really close. Actually, he's He's gotten me through a lot of tough situations, being a single mom. As a kid, I remember always being with my mom. I was always with her, everything we did. And my dad, he was in and out of jail. And I was, it would be shaky, like I was close to him for like a certain amount of time, then he would go to jail and it would hurt my feelings and I would ask my mom where my dad was at. And sometimes she wouldn't tell me because she knew that it would hurt my feelings and I would cry. So, I mean, I feel like my mom had a lot on her shoulders and she pulled through with it. And I'll just thank her for that. I see a strong leader, someone that can actually take a situation, alter it, and make the best out of it. I noticed that Devon always looked for that role model, that male role model. I didn't have a father, so I relied on coaches when I played basketball. Like, if, like they took me in like, like I was their own. He even told me at one point when I was in a, like, a difficult living situation that I could come stay with him. He had a space for me in his basement. So he told me if I need anything, just ask, and he said, if it's something outrageous, then uh, you go, I don't know, but if it's something reasonable, then I can always help you. You know, he's just a good kid. I mean, and in spite of some of the challenges that he's had in his life as a 14 or 15 year old, just a good young man. I tell all, every kid that play for me, once you become a member of my team, you become a member of my family. I wouldn't do anything more for Devon than I would do for any of those kids. But I, I can tell you this, I mean, without a doubt, I, I love my kid. Mandatory study hall since I started coaching. Ultimately, the most important stat that you can have is called GPA, ACT, SAT. I know if your goal is to go to college, then we got to put you in a position to be able to do that. And that's going to start no matter how many points you put in the hole, no matter how fast, no matter how high you jump, it's going to start with academics. I know those kids don't eat breakfast. Most of them, or not all of them, complain about the school lunch. So they're not eating in the cafeteria. I mean, like, for example, I mean, Devon called me one day. I mean, Coach, I missed lunch. They didn't have enough food. He didn't eat. When they come to practice, I want 100%. So we just want to make sure they get something in their stomach. And the reality of it is, too, you know, for some of our kids, that may be the only meal they have. We got a relationship with the coach in Chicago. She invites us up every year, and then we have good friends that can really cook. I have a lot of respect and admiration for the way he works with his team. When they were here last year, I said, Larry, how's the team doing? Instead of telling me the great record they had, he said, we're averaging 3.0, a good GPA. So that's the way he thinks, and I really appreciate that. So we get a chance to go visit with them and a good family and share time. You know, the thing about it is that's an opportunity when you really get to know each other. We get to know the kids a little bit better. I mean, and I tell you, I mean, we've come off those trips and I'd be like, man, I never knew that about this kid or that kid. We've had those conversations. I mean, the things that you find out, I think it's helped us all the time become a better team. For a lot of them kids, I'm the only man in their life on a consistent basis. My job is to give them tools to be able to take away and be successful. I want to help these young men become the change agent and be the people who go away to school, come back, 
and change this environment.